right, so Hackintoshes are fairly basic in the way they, they go. This Mac is very, very strict on what runs and what doesn't. The most important things to making your Hackintosh run is your CPU or processor, your graphics card, and your motherboard. So these are the ones you want to do research on to make sure you get the correct Hackintoshable parts. We have to be kind of careful with the things that we get for Mac. So these are kind of the things that I've gotten here. I got the Black Edition Gigabyte motherboard. I have an i7 core Intel, and then I also have a graphics card, which is NVIDIA. That's a GeForce graphics card. The next thing you will need is, of course, an 8 gig gigabyte stick, which we'll use, we'll use for installing software. The additional components you will need to give you your RAM, your power supply, and, of course, your hard drive, and, of course, the case, and any additional components that you want. RAM, you want to be a little careful about what you get on RAM. I'll leave a link down in the description on a website that you can go to to go get a list of Hackintoshable parts and things like that. Instead of buying the additional components that I need, I'm going to actually use a PC, and I'm going to take out the non-Hackintoshable parts and put in my Hackintoshable parts. In this case, I'll be leaving in the power supply and the hard drive in this case, and removing out the motherboard and the graphics card. The RAM I will reuse and actually put back into my Hackintosh. So the first thing we're going to do is install the CPU into the motherboard. Now one of the most important things to do, and I don't have one of these, but you probably should have one of these, is a bracelet. And the bracelet grounds you. So per se, if you ever have static, you, you could have the possibility of frying the motherboard. Now right now it's in a static proof case, so it's pretty much safe from, from static, but you always want to be very, very careful with, what, with touching electronics without a static proof. It also comes with a manual and other things, which you can feel free to read if you want to read them. Now, this would be a good time before you touch anything. So reach over and touch metal. Make sure yourself's grounded. If you don't have a bracelet, then put it on top of the static proof bag. Installing a CPU is fairly simple. All right, so what you have here is you've got this little lever and it comes down and it comes out like this. That's a lever that comes up. Now we're going to flip up this piece, and you see your CPU slot. So what we're going to be doing before we launch too far into that, so here's our CPU cover, which we'll show you how to put that on. Alright, so here's your CPU. So the most important thing about removing a CPU is you never, ever, ever want to touch the bottom of the CPU. This part here, the bottom is very, very important. And this, this CPU has a notch in it, and the notch makes it really easy to install. It's basically virtually impossible to install these things wrong, but just always be care very, very careful with it when moving it around. You also will see an arrow in the bottom right corner, which will kind of show you where to go as well. Now there are notches that you might not be able to see in it, but there are ones here and ones here down on the CPU. So you want to make sure that those notches are lined up correctly when your CPU, when your CPU goes in. Now, put the CPU in, making sure that this piece is underneath the screw. And this lever is fairly hard to put in. Kind of, it's it's a it's a push to get in there. So just always remember that it, it takes a it takes a push, and then this piece will pop off. So that's just a cover. Make sure you read those too. Sometimes they have you take those off before you put the CPU in. So there's your CPU installed. You normally can read your motherboard to see where your CPU fan plugs in. So in this case, I'm going to now install this thing. And this one, usually, sometimes you have to apply CPU grease. But this already has CPU grease already applied to it. So we don't have to worry about that too much. I'm just gonna place it down. Make sure all the holes are lined up. Alright, next we now are going to press down. And it should pop in. Just like that. The CPU should move around now. 
There you go. Next, we're going to plug this in. It's almost impossible to put in plugs in Just like that. Your CPU is installed. You can also put in your RAM and all the other stuff if you want. I'm going to wait to put my graphics card in until the very last thing. It's nice to have the motherboard in the case before you put the motherboard, before you put the graphics card in. This here is the case that went over on top. I'm going to go ahead and keep that just in case I ever have to take this back or do something like that. All right, there it is. It's installed. We're going to put in the little connector piece for the motherboard in. Make sure you put these in there in there the correct way. So it goes in like this. So I'm going to go ahead and snap that in. The actual board itself, make sure I got all the screw slots in the correct places. I'm just resituating some of the mounts for the motherboard so the motherboard will fit in correctly. Alrighty, so now that the motherboard's in it, we're now going to put the RAM in. Alright, my RAM is installed. This helps you out for finding where wires go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mount the fan in here. We're going to go ahead and plug all the wires in. If you don't know where these wires go, you can look it up in the manual. Alrighty, let's put the graphics card in. There is our graphics card. It's supposed to be a pretty Mondo graphics card. Now, the awesome install. I'm going to go in this slot right here. Alright, so that's in. So now we're just going to quickly screw that awesome graphics card in. Alrighty, things are looking good. Things are mounted. We're getting ready to test it out here. Most of the cable management was pretty easy installing this most of the time those are kind of hard because you once you get a new power supply it gets a little challenging this is a 430 watt power supply so it should be plenty for all of this so this is mostly the the finished product things i replaced was some ram that didn't fit the very old graphics card that very junky graphics card and of course the motherboard which is what i also removed all righty we are complete with all this now we'll put the cap back on. Next, we can install the software. Okay, so this is how to make a bootable USB drive. Uh, the first step is to put your USB drive in your computer right here. So I have it right here on my desktop. There's an instruction guide on Tony Mac's website, which you can go and I'll leave a link down in the description of that. And you can follow the instruction guide if you kind of want to go through this slower then you can go ahead and follow this tutorial online here and I'll just show you each step individually. It goes through everything. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna download, install OS X El Capitan. This is their newest update at the very moment. To download their new software, you're gonna wanna go to App Store, store and then go to Updates and you can see the newest update that they have. In this case, it's El Capitan. Um, really depends, sometimes you wanna use an older update uh, depending on you know how much trouble you wanna go through to install. Uh, this and I just recommend using the newest one because eventually you're gonna upgrade it to it eventually So you might as well use it. The next step is Unibeast and Multibeast. These are two applications you need uh, To download these you also can go to Tony Mac's website and go to their downloads and you can go download them here You can see Unibeast here and Multibeast right here So those are the two places you can download it and it's just on their website Tony Mac's website there and I'll also leave that in the description as well. Next, we're going to be finding disk utility. Disk utility is kind of hidden in your applications. Uh, it's not invisible, but it's there. It's just sort of hidden. Well, you want to go into your applications, and you want to scroll all the way to the bottom, and you're going to see utilities. In utilities, you're going to want to scroll down, and you're going to find disk utility right here. So go ahead and open that. We don't need this one up. Disk utility is used for lots of things. We're going to be using this disk utility for is reformatting our USB drive because at the moment it's not really formatted correctly. So we're going to go ahead and go to your USB drive. So you want to go ahead and go to partitions and you want to make sure 16 gig and up. If you use an 8 gig, I don't know if an 8 gig would work or not. You could you could try it, but <laughs> I don't think you want to try it. I think the lowest one you want to go to is 16. So once you're over, not your USB, but the one above it, you'll see it's the same drive, it's just in partitions. So we're gonna go ahead and go to partitions and we're gonna scroll down and go to one partition. And then we're gonna rename our drive to USB. We're gonna wanna make sure this is a Mac extended journal. Click on that. And then next we're gonna go to options and we're gonna make it a GUI partition table. Make sure that that is selected. Go ahead and hit okay to that. And then hit imply and go ahead and hit partition as well. Alrighty, so that's done right there. So we're gonna go ahead and quit disk utility. We don't need disk utility anymore. 
The next step is we're gonna open Unibeast. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. Unibeast right here, we're gonna hit continue, 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 continue. Oh my gosh, there's so many continues. Agree. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our main USB stick, which is the one we just formatted. We're gonna continue. And then we're gonna go to El Capitan. You have to have El Capitan installed on your computer for this to actually work. So make sure you have that installed. So we're gonna, we're gonna highlight El Capitan. And then we're gonna hit continue. You can use U5 boot mode, as in if you have different like motherboards that have BIOSes differently. Um, I don't really know. All I know is legacy boot mode seems to work for me, so I just kind of left it at that. Um, but if it doesn't work for you, you could try U5 boot mode and see if that works. But in this case, I'm just gonna say legacy boot mode. And we're gonna go ahead and click OK or continue to that. Now here is if you had, so if you just have any graphics card that's older or kind of depends, um, you have to read through these and see. I happen to know none of these. I don't think I need any of these. It kind of depends. You might need this, you might not. I'm just gonna skip it. I don't think I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. I'm gonna make sure I have all these. USB, legacy boot mode, good. Good there. So we're gonna head in and continue. We're gonna type in our password, secret password there. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now we're just gonna wait. When this is done installing, this will take a little bit. You'll see there'll be a, like a screen that'll pop up and different things that will happen. Just go ahead and just let this go. Um, and I'll pause the video and we'll come back to it. All right, so the install is done and you see that this interesting USB thing popped up. And you see that the install has a bright check mark. Install successful. Okay, cool, quit that. All right, so now that this, this USB thing is up, we're just gonna take Multibeast, and we're gonna drag it right onto here. So we have Multibeast. Multibeast is nice to have when you're installing. So that's it there. So now we will boot from the drive. Take the USB over to our awesome, awesome good Packintosh, we'll plug it in, and we'll boot off the USB drive. So let's go ahead and eject it. Eject all. You wanna make sure you eject all, so you eject both USB and E5. All right, so we are now going to actually install the software, finally. So um, one of the most important things about installing the software is patience. All right, so now that we have our USB, we're gonna go ahead and plug it into the back of the computer directly into the motherboard and not a USB on the actual case because those can be slower. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in the back of my computer. We'll jump over the computer and get it going. Okay, so one very important thing to think about is we also need a wired in keyboard. So a keyboard that wires directly into the computer because wireless ones don't always actually work. All right, once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and open the BIOS. To open the specific BIOS on my computer, it is delete. Majority of the time, it is delete to open BIOSes. I would check with your motherboard manual to see what it is to get into your BIOS. All right, so we're gonna actually set three things in the BIOS. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go all the way over here to over here and enter classic mode. Um, now, let's go ahead and move our mouse out of the way. I don't use the mouse. Some people do, but I don't. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to save and exit. We're gonna go down to load optimized defaults. So go ahead and go ahead and click that and do that. I already did that, so I won't worry about that. Then one thing is we're gonna go over to peripherals and we are going to Disable this audio LED. Um, I don't know, you could probably have this on and be okay. I just kept it disabled. Um, next thing that we're gonna go over is we're gonna go down to BIOS features and we are gonna roll down to VTD. And this setting we need to make sure is disabled. So go ahead and disable that. All right, there. Okay, and now next, go ahead and go up and hit save and exit. Exit out of the BIOS. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and boot into our USB selection where we can choose boot device. Um, this is in this particular motherboard, it's F12. It can be different for different motherboards. Our SanDisk Cruiser, that's the one we're after. Um, it's actually the UFI one that we're trying to boot from. Um, not the SanDisk Cruiser without the UFI. If you made your USB drive a legacy support, you will need a boot from the non UFI bootable drive. So now we're just gonna go to the SanDisk UFI. I built this USB drive as a UFI USB stick. I think in my other video, I made it a legacy support. You can do that too, they both work. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to settings, 
I'm gonna go down one, and this is basically how you type in boot flags. Boot flags are used for when you have a problem trying to boot into your computer. Link down in the description of a list of boot flags and what they do. And I'm definitely gonna add a boot flag here, and it's called slash V. Um, what this does is seeing your normal boot screen, you're gonna see the code. This works really good for diagnosing problems. So once we're done with that, we're gonna boot into the USB drive, not our main drive that's in our computer, the USB drive here. So we'll go ahead and run that. When this is done running, it should bring us into the installer, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, we are done. Here it is all booted into the USB drive. Keep in mind, you might need to use boot flags to get into this stage. And we're gonna go ahead and choose our language, which is English, and hit continue. Instead of keep hitting continue, I'm gonna go ahead and run over and go to disk utility, which is right over there. I love how the mouse gets bigger. Disk utility there. And then we're gonna go to our main drive that's built into our computer. Not our USB drive, but our main one. And it's not the main drive, not the name main drive. It's this ST3 blah, 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 continue on. So the one we wanna click on. And then we're gonna actually hit this erase button up here. Then I'm gonna actually repartition this as main drive because I like my, my drive on my computer to be named main. You don't have to do this. You can name this to whatever. You can name it. El Capitan or whatever. Format OSX Extended Journal, that's what we want. GUI Partition Map, that is what we want, perfect. Uh, go ahead and hit Erase. Keep in mind, this is repartitioning the drive. Just make sure you have no data on the drive that you are erasing, because you will lose it. Okay, now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and quit Disk Utility, and now we're at the Setup menu, now we can continue through this. Continue, Agree, now we're gonna select our main drive, not our USB drive, but our main drive, this one here, the one that we reformatted. So now we're done with that, go ahead and hit continue, and let this install. So when this is done installing, it will want to reboot. Uh, just let it reboot. It's done, so let's go ahead and restart our computer. So now, when this restarts, what our plan is, we don't want to boot into the USB again. We actually want to boot into our main drive. So now that we've, what we basically did was install our software onto the main drive. So now, instead of booting from the USB, we're gonna actually boot from the USB into the main drive. So now this is the time where we need to type in one extra boot flag. Usually you need the boot flag when you're trying to get into the USB, but not all the time. Sometimes after you install it with the USB, it might boot just fine with the USB, but then you go to try it with the main drive and it might not boot so well. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a couple boot flags here. A slash V so I can see what's going on. Not necessary, but I, I just like it because I like to see the code behind stuff. And the special boot flag here is NV underscore disable equals one. So then we'll just go down. Hit return. So now we're gonna boot from into the main drive. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we are now booted in. So go ahead and go through all the setup information. All right, so now that you're in your computer, where you're gonna have to install a couple things. Um, now what we're gonna go ahead and do is I went ahead and dragged all my files that I need over here on this USB drive. Let's go ahead and drag that over there. All right, so there are a few things you need and you actually have to do these in order. I'll leave a link down in the description of all the files that you need. If you're doing my exact build, you're going to want to download the exact files. Make sure they are updated to the latest update of whatever update that you are installing. If you don't have my exact build, just install the drivers that you have for your motherboard and the stuff that you have for your particular boards. Um, uh, in this case, I, if you're doing my exact build and you have my exact stuff, you're going to want to do this pretty much to the T. Audio can sometimes be a little tricky to get going on these computers. I actually pot patch the audio, and I'll show you how to do that. So, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and start with our first application. So go ahead and open MultiBeast. Now that we have our first application open, we're gonna go ahead, you can actually go over to Quick Start. I don't use that, I just go straight to drivers. For audio, we're gonna install this ALC1150 Realtek audio driver. That's the audio that's built inside of our computer. Once we get that done, then we can go over to mask. We're gonna go to the fake SMC, blah, 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 1150, whatever that is. We go over to network, we're gonna go into Intel, and we're gonna go and select the top one, which is Apple Intel E, 1000 E, V, blah, blah, blah version. In USB, we're gonna select third party, USB, three, 
Um, we're gonna go over to bootloader, so we're gonna install our UFI bootloader. If you did a legacy bootloader, you can do the legacy as well. I did the UFI, personally I like it better. Um, but whichever which you used, I would, I would stick to that one. Go over to customization, we don't need any graphics. SSDT, we don't need any of those. We need system identification, we need that. And we're gonna go to Mac, Mac Pro 3.3. One is what we want there. And then we're gonna go over to build and we're gonna make sure this is selected on our main drive and not any of our USB drives, but on our main one. Go ahead and hit install. All right, we are done. So we'll go ahead and quit MultiBeast. And keep in mind too, the drivers that you install for this is based upon your build. If you have my exact build, you'll probably install very similar drivers. Um, but keep in mind that if you have my exact build and everything precisely to the T that what I have, You'll need to do this exact thing that I'm doing here and select all the same things. Um, keep in mind, if you have my exact same graphics card, you will need this graphics card driver, which I've installed here, and I'll leave a link down in the description for that. These two applications we'll use after we reboot. So we're gonna go ahead and open the driver. And this is our NVIDIA driver. So this is get to get our graphics card working 100%, because right now it's kind of partially not working. If I was to open Safari, you can really see the glitches. See how like none of it's showing up, and it's got all this like, Things Your graphics card shouldn't be doing that. It should be showing up nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and quit Safari. And that's what this graphics NVIDIA driver does. It makes our graphics card very compatible with Mac and helps it out quite a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue, continue, agree. We're gonna make sure that this is installed on the main drive, which it is, install. Type in our super secret password. Uh, confirm and installation. That's just asking you, is it okay that we're gonna restart your computer after this? All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit restart. Now, here's the cool thing. We don't need to type into any boot flags or anything this time around. This should just shut down, it should restart, and come right back up, and everything's good. And bingo, we are in our computer. All right, now that we are booted in and we have these, we do not need these two applications anymore. Those can get out of there. Now we're gonna focus on patching our audio. Because if you realize, our audio doesn't work. It gives us an X sign and says, hey, you have no audio. So we're gonna now get our audio working. So to do this, we actually have to do a couple things. One, there's an eFi drive that doesn't show up on our drive, so you don't see the drive anywhere. And so what we can do is we can go to Finder, um, go into Preferences, Sidebar, and just select our main drive so we see our main drive there. So here's our main drive, but there's no eFi drive. We see eFi backups, but we don't see an eFi drive here. So what we're gonna need to do is mount our eFi drive. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this application, link down in the description. I'll keep links to all of this. Type in our super secret password. Okay, so now that we got the application, now keep in mind that these applications, you might actually have to go in to preferences and allow them because these applications are from unidentified developers. So you'll need to make sure that you actually go into uh, system preferences and go into security and privacy and go in and actually say open, otherwise it won't let you open it. All right, now that you got it open, you're gonna select the disk 0S1, not the disk 1S1, but the one above it, the disk 0S1. This is your first disk, this is your main drive. So go ahead and hit okay to that. And what you're gonna wanna do is hit mount. And now if we go into Finder, we see this extra eFi drive here that wasn't here before. And then we can see and have access to our um, boot flags and plist, config.plist. This is nice to have access to when you're adding boot flags. Um, so once we have that, we can now just now we can run our next application. So now that we have this eFi drive mounted, now we're gonna go ahead and patch our audio. Because right now our audio doesn't work, uh, so now we have to patch it. So let's go ahead and double click on this, go in and go into audio.clover.blah blah blah blah, open our next audio patcher, I'll have a link down in the description for this file, or this folder that you can download. We're gonna go down to this one here, which is the third one down, and this is your Realtek one, so we're gonna go double click on that. It's gonna launch us a file here, and it's a command. We're gonna double click on that command. We're gonna say open. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Your computer will not open this file, because it will say audio blah 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 blah, is from an unidentified developer, we do not open it. So, we have to go into system preferences, security and privacy, then we're gonna say open from anywhere, and open. 
So that will now open the application, we will launch our application. We're gonna go ahead and type our password in. This is just your login password that you use to log into your computer. Okay, now it's gonna ask us a few questions. It's going to run a bit of code and it's gonna say, okay, to patch. It says everything's running good, it's everything's good. Now, confirm Realtek ALC 1150. That's what we have. So we're going to type in the command console, Y. Y for yes and for no. In this case, we, have, we definitely have an ALC 1150 uh, driver. So yes on that. So we're gonna go ahead and type in Y. It's gonna ask us one other thing. Uh, patch apple hda.kext. This you can say yes or no to. I'm just gonna say yes to it um, because I do want it to patch that. Um, or type in Y for yes. Clover Audio ID Injection, Y for that as well. Click in Y and use Audio ID 1, Y for that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click Y and hit Enter. And let that run its code. Process complete. Beautiful, now that it says process complete, we're gonna go ahead and quit Terminal. And if you try your audio right now, you'll notice it doesn't work, or at least it's showing that it doesn't work. Um, you actually have to go into System Preferences and go into Sound and go into output and change your output to line out, audio line out port. Now there are two audio lines out ports, one's in the front of my Hackintosh and one's in the back port. I'm using the back port currently. So we're gonna go ahead and click that on. We're gonna go ahead and cancel out of that, cancel out of that, and now we're done. Audio should work. So we're gonna go ahead and go to YouTube and go see if our audio really does work. Today we're going to be 3D printing and Phoenix scooter. Audio works. Has uh, several settings. You can actually open the beautiful completely up. Our audio now works on our computer. How cool and awesome is that? Lock it down. Um, keep in mind I had to plug the audio jack into the pink port in the back. Okay, we are working. Audio is working. Everything is functioning. Your computer is now successfully a Hackintosh. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, like, comment, and doodly we'll see you next week. Alrighty, the part is done. Look at it. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's very sturdy. Alright, here's the part. Let's go ahead and put it on the V-pad. See what happened here. Um, so if you look at the back of the part, You'll notice that, I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but it is a little section I can decide if I want the bees to go directly in, shut them completely down, or make it so the queen can't get out. I don't have that on when I first move the bees in to make sure the queen stays.